This is ATL Day Ones, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. Welcome, welcome, welcome in to the ATL Day Ones podcast with Jarvis and Tanitra. Woo! It is a Tuesday, a $2 Tuesday. I don't know what we're playing $2 for, right. but it's a $2 Nothing. Tuesday. Right <laughs> yeah, like, we're because we're expensive around here. Like, you know, but, you know, what's not expensive is the fact that you can go to any podcast flat platform and download us wherever you go. And wherever you download us, make sure, make sure, make sure you give us a five star review. And always, always, as always, we always want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day, um, because we just really appreciate you for what you guys have been doing. Because you have been rocking with us since day one, right here on ATL Day Once, pun intended, of course. Um, but there are some some interesting things that you know we have to talk about today. We're going to talk about whether or not the Mets have put the pressure on the Braves. Mm-hmm. And we will continue our trip around the NFC South. We're going to take a visit down to Tampa, head down 75. And then once we get into Florida, I don't know where we go, but, you know, we'll figure it out as we go along. And our main man, David Harrison from Locked On Bucks, is going to join us. Got some very good things to talk about with him. And last but not least, are they doing Kumbaya in Summer League in Las Vegas? Mm-hmm. Has the decision been made on John Collins? We'll talk about all that in for the culture. But before we get there, the Braves, they lose to the Mets last night 4-1. to one. Mac Scherzer, not Mac, Max, Max Scherzer, T, like, it seemed like he was just putting on an absolute show, and he was just mowing the Braves down left and right last night, and I was just like, there's no way they're going to win this game if he stays in the game any longer, and he stayed in it as long as he could, he ended up going seven innings, Mm -hmm. and it was just an absolute masterpiece. Um, Playoff atmosphere last night uh, at a truest park, for sure. Yeah, and Offline, I did share with you that I thought they were going to lose this game because I was concerned about the fact that the bullpen had to be utilized as much as it did over the weekend. You're talking about ending the series against the Nats with a 12 inning game, and then you have to come right back and get yourself turn around. Yeah, Yeah. so I thought that was going to be a lot for them, but on both sides of the ball. So offensively, I was wondering about the bullpen, which of course they gave up two more runs and, and yes. really put it out of uh, out of reach for the Braves, but also just on their offense, how, how hard the Braves had to work at the plate to get back into all, two of the three games this, this past weekend. So not surprised, but to your point, you look at what Max Scherzer did, and man, I mean, he took advantage of that, but also the Mets took advantage of the fact that Max Reed just couldn't find his place. Like he right. could not place the ball last night. Yes, he had five strikeouts, but he also had five walks, which was a career high for him. And yes. they took advantage of that. So literally you have moments where he would pitch four times and he pitched four walk, four balls and they were yeah. walking. So again, a good strategy on their part, just to recognize that, Hey, he can't locate his, the ball. So we'll, we'll take advantage of it. But yeah, I do believe that now that the, the Mets have won game one, yeah, that pressure shifts on to the Braves because what you don't want to do is force yourself to win game three just so you don't get swept. At least you win game two, you go to the rubber match, and then from there it's anybody's game. No doubt about it. The, like you can just look at after uh, Guillermo hit the home run in the uh... – any uh for for the New York mm-hmm. Mets, you could just yeah. see when they pan to the uh the dugout, you saw Max Scherzer. He was absolutely fired up. So I definitely think the uh, Mets definitely put the pressure on the Braves. But yes. um, we'll talk about who has to step up for the Braves in order for mm-hmm. them to turn this series around and and go ahead and make it a one one and potentially win this series at mm-hmm. Truist Park. But before we get there, T, tell them about Rock Auto and all the type of discounts they got going on for all our lucky listeners. Yes. So when we talk about Rock Auto, 
this episode is brought to you by them. So with the ever increasing numbers of makes and models of cars, you know, it's impossible for a local chain auto parts store to just stock all the parts you need. And I know we've both had to deal with that with our vehicle. So Indeed. why would you even endure that? It's just kind of pointless. It seems like sometimes the questions are intimidating because maybe you don't know how to answer those questions or you don't know what they're talking about. Then you wait while the person behind the counter seemingly puts all this information into their database or goes to the back and does all this shuffling and still nothing most of the time. They really still don't have your parts. You don't have to go through any of that because you know what? If you have a connected device in front of you, then you have access to rockauto.com. So you can save time. You can save money. I mean, why would you spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store and you know about getting those parts from a car dealership? Nah. So I'm looking at a mirror replacement head, my right mirror the cover came off and i went to the rock auto site myself and that mirror cover jarvis is somewhere between 10 and 16 dollars that's, that's what it. i'm talking about yeah <laughs> anywhere between 10 and 16 just depending on what, what i want to spend so when they say that they're reliably low you can actually believe that they mean it every part you need brake parts tail lamps, motor oil, even carpet for your car, if that's what you're going for. And this is a family business. They've been around for 20 years. So easy for you to go explore the site today. Go to rockauto.com right now, or at least after the show, and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know that we sent you. And again, that's rockauto.com. Rockauto.com. Go check them out. And they're always going to have some special things for you. One of the things that, you know, we talked about as far as, you know, Braves losing losing last night, but the thing the people the two people who I feel T have to be special is mm -hmm. the guys who went 0 for 4 last night. I'm talking about Dansby Swanson and Matt Olson. And when you're talking about your guys that are sitting in those that two and three hole, you cannot have that uh, you can't go over oh. when you're going against a, a your uh division rival and you're right. trying to take the division, take the lead in the division. You just can't do that. And it's not something that that's, that's basically is unacceptable because, you know, yeah. Matt Olson had been trying to – he's been playing well. Mm -hmm. And Dansby Swanson has been playing well, too, oh, as exactly. far as, you know, because a lot of people thought that he was a guy that, you know, was an all-star snub. And I, mm -hmm. and I believe that, you know. And, and it's just a point right now. We, we we asked the question of whether or not who needs to be hot. Those are two guys that I feel that should be right in line, standing yeah. in line, say, hey, we're ready for them to give you some production so we can get yeah. this NL East division under wraps. Right, because if you had gotten even a little bit of run production, especially if you've gotten it early on, sometimes that gives that pitcher confidence to know that he's ahead by virtue mm -hmm. of the scoreboard. But when you're playing from behind 2 nothing, and then you can't do anything, I mean, five hits last night? Five yeah. hits, that's not going to win you most games. And I agree with you when it comes to Matt Olson. Love the fact that, you know, he's like I, the doubles king. I call him Mr. Double Double. And so mm -hmm. he's getting on base. He's driving runners. And that's great. But sometimes we kind of need you to hit a long ball every now and again. And you can hit a solo shot if you Don't want get to. get us out of there. <laughs> yeah, we need to get a little bit more of that. And then Dansby Swanson really just need him to return back to form just ever so slightly. Because if he can do that, then that goes a long way. But low key, I also feel like we need to get just a little bit more from Ronald Acuna Jr. Because you being in that leadoff position, and even if you're just getting on base, you can steal a base or two. And if you know, and if you're on second and that ball is hit deep to left or deep to right, you know Uncle Ronnie, Ronnie Washington, is going to wave you home. So right. we need a little bit more productivity from him as well. But I do agree with you. You can't have the two and three hole go out with offers and expect to beat a team that came in here with something to prove. No doubt about it. And, uh, and speaking of Ronald Acuna, uh, how about this? He's going to participate in the home run derby. Now, this is something that uh, – some people who want to just find something negative about something can mm -hmm. say, oh, no, he shouldn't do this. He shouldn't participate. And it's going to mess up his swing and all this, blah, 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 whatever. I like it, the fact that it's, it's, it's Ronald Acuna. We get to see him put himself on display like mm -hmm. I think he should be at, at right now because, like you said, Freddie Freeman is, is out the door. And Ronald Acuna is a guy that I feel like is next. He's ready to step into that that face of the organization type mm -hmm. situation, regardless of 
whether he's speaking for himself or he has an interpreter. I don't give a crap about that. Mm-hmm. I like the guy and what he's doing and what he's been able to do. Just he brings a spunk. He brings a certain type of energy to this lineup. And I'm the more Ronald Acuna T, the better for me. Yeah, it's interesting because I kind of lean. I'm on the fence, but I am leaning a little bit in the space of. No, don't tell me. No, T, don't tell me you're leading that way. But, but, I have, but my rationale is different. My rationale okay. is not that he needs to course correct on his swing. His swing is fine. Right. But admittedly, after 2019, which was the last time that he participated, he got into the semifinals. But his production did go down after that derby and there have there's research and you know baseball is all about stats and the stats actually show that for a lot of the players especially the ones who get into the semifinal or the final round that their production goes down for at least a few weeks if not a month after that and we can't afford for Acuna Jr. to come back off the all-star break and have his production go down that's my only concern like if he can maybe pace himself because he went hard in the paint in that semifinal round and kind of ran out of gas as a result or i'm sorry went hard in the paint early and then in the semifinal round slowly kind of ran out of gas but maybe if he can pace himself so that when he comes back to play the second half of the season he'll really still have a lot of gas left in the tank no doubt about it and because we know nephew is going to go hard with whenever he's right. on that field and yeah. and i love him for it and now as long as he stays healthy i'm all good as far as the decision to to get into the home run derby now our buddies over at the falcon hog team yeah. they dropped the list it's list season <laughs> they put a list of free agents that you know maybe the falcons possibly need to take a look at and yeah. after going through this list mm-hmm. There's somebody that I think that was pretty interesting. Um, okay. I'm going to start with Trey Flowers. He's oh, a guy man, who signed a big. No, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, hear me. But I got a, I got a Christmas I got a Christmas wish list. Okay. Uh, that that a guy uh, name as well. But we'll get to yeah. yours first. But Trey Flowers is a name mm-hmm. that is very interesting to me because yes. one, he, for two two reasons, mm-hmm. he's a veteran. And I believe that they need one more veteran on the outside linebacker edge rush mm-hmm. position specifically. Yeah. I talked about the defensive end, and they end up listening to your boy and watching the, watch, you know, watching our show and saying, "Oh yeah, those guys know what they're talking about," and gals as well. And um, because when you look at the production from that that specific position, T, mm-hmm. they'll combine for five and a half sacks. Yeah. And there are four four names who are at the top of that list. Yes. So yeah, five and a half sacks. And, and, and for, between four people, it's mm-hmm. not good at all. It, right. it tells you exactly why the the, the Falcons were last in, in, with 18 sacks in the league yeah. uh, last year. So I, I think they, if they can add one more vet. They already got Lorenzo Carter, who almost matched matched that, that production right. <laughs> by himself toward the end of last year um, in 2020, uh, 2021. Right. So mm-hmm. I, I think that if the Falcons take a look at Trey Flowers mm-hmm. – Somebody and the second reason is he has yeah. something to prove, and we know yes. that tariff guys who have something to prove and who are veterans mm-hmm. they come a little bit cheaper than the other guys yeah. who have that all that all, all pro pro bowl potential. And mm-hmm. I and I think that that's the type of that's exactly the type of player that uh, Terry Fontenot is looking for. Yeah, and I would throw Anthony Barr in that mix as well. Yes, because I like yeah. him too. That's yeah. a good one too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, real talk. Edge is where you need the productivity and also you need the depth. But mm-hmm. I, also, I also like the fact that they're veterans, both of them, but they're young veterans, meaning that they're uh, you know in the 28, 30 range versus say 33 yes. to 35. So yes. you assume even with Trey's injuries or what have you, you assume that there's still some something left for him to, for, for uh, Anthony Barr, even Trey uh, Flowers to prove. But my, my other thing there with him is this kind of going on the prove it piece. When we talk about Terry Fontenot, we know that he has been masterful in getting one year prove it deals done. And maybe, you know, it didn't work out necessarily for Mike Davis, but it sure worked out for Cordero Patterson. So you just hope that Terry Fontenot can go out there and strike twice. And who knows what one of those players or both of those players may be able to do to revive their careers under someone like Dean Pease, if healthy. So I I like both of those. No doubt about it. And just real quick, we talked about him before on the show, so we won't have to go into depth. J.C. Mm-hmm. Treader. Yes. Take a yes. look at him. Yes. He's center. He can play center. He played for yes. the Browns, the offensive yes. line. They don't mm-hmm. get anything else right, they'll get the offensive line right. 
Best. Listen to your boy, TF. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not going to steal you wrong, my brother. Um, but coming up next, though, T, we are going to take a trip down 75 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Locked on Bucks host David Harrison will join us next right here as we take a deep dive around the NFC South right here on Locked on Sports Atlanta. This is ATL Day Ones with Jarvis and T.